good. So for those of you who will be missing some parts of it, you will be able to, sh to, to watch it later. Okay, cool. So as I said, um, working at Levagon Tokyo, what is a Levagon? It's a global coding bootcamp. What we do here, we teach people how to code, how to build web applications from scratch during our web development bootcamps, and also how to use and manipulate data during our data science bootcamps. We do it in two formats, a full-time, now weeks, very intensive course, who want to dive into tech immediately for those who have some uh, family or work commitments. Uh, we offer a 24 week part-time program. This was very popular also again among the people who are currently uh, working on their startups, trying to create some MVP. Um, and a bit stats about us that we are proud to show off. Uh, we are top ranked bootcamp worldwide according to our student reviews. And since we, uh, we are founded in France, Paris, six years ago, we already reached a very important milestone recently, 10,000 graduates all over the world in 40 cities. Um, uh, yeah, all over the world who graduated from Levagon coding bootcamps. And we are very product oriented uh, bootcamp. So during the, the bootcamp, our students code a lot, 90% of the time. And this is the reason why we have a lot of startups, almost 300 startups who came out of Levagon um, globally. And I think that around 10 startups who came off Levagon in Japan. Uh, a lot of startups uh, do fundraising, as you can see. A bit stats about Levagon Tokyo. Uh, we have founded in Tokyo three years ago. We had uh, over 20 bunches in that time and we teach in English. Uh, that's why we have a very diverse uh, groups all the time from seven to 14 nationalities participate usually in our coding bootcamps. So we also do a lot of events every week, uh, sometimes speech nights like this, sometimes tech talks and sometimes hands-on tech workshops for free to share knowledge with the audience. Uh, this is just a bit about the career paths that our graduates take. By the way, a lot of them join startups after graduation. Uh, some of them join as developers, some of them join as product managers, and some of them just decide to start their own ventures or do freelancing. And this is just the last slide about their uh, next program that will run for web development if in case you're interested to learn how to code uh, feel free to let me uh, know about it. And right now I will officially start our today's pitch event. And we will start from the first startup. Uh, Emily, Rina, please feel free to uh, share your screen and you have 10 minutes. Okay, excellent. So um, can you see my screen now? Yes. Okay. I will just uh, share. So my name is Irina and uh, I'm going to talk about our startup. We are actually not a registered com co company yet, but we are working towards that. So we are still like a project uh, stage and we started working with uh, my friend a year ago. And it was just, you know, a side hustle, but then it got serious. And just a couple of weeks ago, we onboarded uh, six other uh, volunteers. So now we are a team of eight and three other people are like waiting to join us. So we are excited to grow. And so what we do, uh, we are working on a goal setting app uh, for young ambitious people who need a convenient place to um, keep their goals and uh, they also want to stay motivated. So this is something we want to provide to them because there are lots of goal setting apps uh, right now out there. But personally, I tried maybe like 30, 40 of them and nothing, um, I don't know, worked for me. So um, right now we are testing our third prototype uh, and uh, our main ideas are to set smart goals and to set uh, actionable steps straight away and also uh, to make the progress uh, visible so you see like okay I'm working towards my goal I'm uh, close to the uh, finish line and that motivates and also we want to provide community like accountability meetings workshops on goal settings and uh, uh, working out the problems that people um, have okay so 
how do I go to the next? Okay, so this is our roadmap from the last year. So we started in February, had some prototypes and we did a lot of user research. So I would say that our team is like um, very UX heavy team. And uh, this year, like we are going to launch the app in June but our internal deadline is April, May. We want to have our beta version ready so we can test it with our um, first users. And yeah, so now we have a team of eight people. We are building community and uh, now starting working on the app development. Uh, so what we use, we use React Native and we will use uh, Amazon Web Services and Dynamo uh, DB. And for design team, they use mostly Figma and Canva and Neuron Muro for brainstorming sessions. And our communication is mostly in Notion, uh, also in Slack and uh, lots of Zoom meetings as well. So what will you get if you join our team? Uh, because obviously we are not uh, a company and we cannot pay you salary. So you will get experience uh, working within an agile international team. Right now it's US, Japan, China, Kenya, Ireland and the UK. And you will be able to use some of uh, your deliverables for your portfolio. Lots of shared knowledge and um, sharpened skills. So we are here to like teach each other to collaborate, do lots of pair programming and design. Sorry, I went a little longer, but uh, that's all. No, it's completely fine. Thank you so much, Irina. Um, so guys, it's time for asking questions. Feel free to type any questions that you want to ask about uh, the project, about the team, about the vision. So you already have a question. What is your plan to monetize the app? That's a very, very good question. We had like different options. We were like thinking, so it's still not finalized, but I think we are leaning towards more like subscription model that will include not only what's in app, but also lots of um, support outside of the app. So now I'm doing some workshops and people come to them. So we are thinking that that could be like our monetization model. Oh, you also have a question from Thomas. You have a global team. How did you all come together as a group? Oh, that's kind of a long story, but I would say like everyone knew me, uh, knew me from uh, one way or another. So someone went to a boot camp with me, uh, someone we met like at the workshop and uh, some people actually were my uh, users when I was testing some ideas, but I saw that, you know, they share your, they share the same values. They are very like goal oriented. And I asked if they would be interested on uh, like working with us and they were. Cool. Um, is there an opportunity to be alpha beta testers? Uh, yes, of course. Uh, just uh, match me. Okay. I will share my LinkedIn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We already have like a little database, but we kind of like want to have more and more users for a beta test. So I'll share the link uh, to my LinkedIn and yeah, just send me a message. Cool. How about language, English and Japanese only? Uh, we don't really use Japanese. We don't have any Japanese people on the team. Like though some of us live in Japan, we can speak Japanese, but yeah, we use English only. Well, who are your competitors and what is your competitive advantage? Um, I would say that our competitive advantage is having this human side, human support throughout the events and workshops. Because most, and another thing is that we want to, you know, set smart goals to make sure that uh, people set the goals right. Because most of the apps you just input, okay, I want to lose weight. And then you just get the reminder, okay, lose weight, lose weight. It doesn't really work that way. So like one of the advantages is setting a smart goal and another is getting support from real people. Oh, how much coding background do you need? Uh, so we are using React Native and I would say that it's pretty easy uh, to learn if you know, okay, like I'm not a very experienced coder either. I just graduated the bootcamp last summer. Uh, so if you know some basics of CSS and JavaScript, uh, we'll be happy to teach you. And if you are ready to learn, there are lots of uh, good courses and also the documentation for React Native is pretty good. So I think like all together we'll be able to make it. 
We have a lot of questions from your mates, other startups. <laughs> Support from real people. You mean the company staff or other users? If first, how will you scale? If second, how will you guarantee quality? Oh, many, many good questions. So as I said, we are still at a very early stage. We are testing ideas out. So for now, uh, we are testing like the support from our team only. But once we uh, start scaling, we are thinking of maybe, I don't know, teaching facilitators who, can, for example, can um, uh, organize the accountability meetings. So I'm running a um, like mastermind accountability group for more than a year now. And it's been working really well uh, for everyone. So we are now thinking how we can make it remotely uh, without me being in the team and so on. Well, uh, have you written already privacy policy? Uh, you mean uh, for the app? No, we haven't yet. Okay. Um, would you consider apps that use gamification for achieving goals? Habitica, Live RPG, your competition? Yeah, we looked at them. Uh, like, again, personally, for me, it worked maybe for a week. And then it's just, you know, another uh, notification in the list of notification. I just stopped opening the app. So we want to do something that will make people to, you know, come back, not just you see the reminder and forget about it. Um, what are current positions open for the team? Maybe we can, um, like, if you can get back to this slide. Okay, yeah. you're right now on this slide. One more time, maybe a lot of people missed oh, okay. this. It wasn't uh, last really uh, point. about the positions. So, like, it's all, uh, it only says what we use. Uh, so, we'll be happy to have more engineers and designers and uh, also for the business model, like business uh, strategists. So uh, whatever you want to work on, like because it's uh, volunteering your time, if you have some skills you want to master, just uh, use the QR code and I'll also share the link. Um, there will be a little like uh, application form where we will get to know each other and then we'll talk and uh, I'm sure that we can find uh, a role for everyone who's passionate about setting goals or just uh, improving their skills. And those uh, for those people who use a uh, woman who code who in a woman who code slack you can also find Irina in the Tokyo channel okay uh, what type of help do you need the most now in priority product development biz dev partner building I would say uh, customer uh, acquisition so talking with users uh, talking with customers and uh, also uh, engineering because we will start uh, already like working on the database this week and uh, most of our team uh, members they work from one to three hours a week so that's not a lot of time uh, till June if each person works three hours a week so I would say yeah engineering and uh, like uh, customer acquisition okay and the last question we have uh, which geographies are you targeting uh, I would say world. So we are not targeting Japan only. So the first version of the web app will be in English. And we are trying to like uh, build community like throughout um, different countries, US and like all of the countries that we have members in. We are trying to, oh, also like I'm Russian and one of my teammates is also Russian. So we are also building in Russia as well. Cool. Thank you so much, Irina. Um, I believe you could also share your link yeah, in the I will chat. Do it in the chat and I also send the link for their like job application for the uh, volunteer application in the chat. Cool. Thank you so much. Um, and the next one is Paolo. Paolo, please go ahead and the floor is yours. Oh, like, are you actually saying something? Because I feel you're muted. You're muted, Paolo. Huh. Are you yes. with us? Okay. Great start to this presentation. All right. Thank you, everyone, for your patience. So, hi, my name is Paolo. I'm here with Odaiba. Uh, we are looking to build a tool, online connectivity tool 
for the next we're, we're looking to bring online connectivity for the next generation of learning tools this is a long sentence and kind of hard to imagine what is it that i'm thinking about uh, we are looking we are starting from the point that education as it is now doesn't really work hey and i'm actually surprised because i thought i had better slides up there sorry one second ah my bad okay so education as, as we have it now doesn't really work we have a big issue in this in the uh, in this points about keeping the students focused and engaged feeling the connectivity between them and having too much work for teachers. The re reason for that is that you overwhelmingly they use bad tools, uh, mostly Zoom for teaching online, uh, which leads to these situations where kids are sitting for four hours straight, uh, listening to someone talking, and it's really difficult to have the same, the same sense or feeling as you do in school. So, it might be a temporary situation in many countries as soon as COVID passes or here in Japan, we're not feeling it so much. Uh, but the reality is when students cannot participate in school for whatever reason, be it because uh, there is a flu season, because they ended up in the hospital or because they, they can't physically get to the school, what is the next best thing that we can bring them? And that's what we are looking into. The online connectivity tool. So the key features that we have is essentially bringing a platform which allows students to work on assignments together uh, using a whiteboard being connected through a call and at the same at the same time using the latest knowledge and uh, latest knowledge and research from group work and education to make the experience more efficient and providing a dashboard and tools to teachers to follow the progress and make the teaching experience more easy like easier and take out less resources we won the japan hackathon last year in june we've been going forward with the team we have as me as a founder we have a ceo some advisors on board and a really international team uh, from 10 like many different cultural backgrounds across four different time zones and around 60% of us are teachers or have had teaching experience. But the most, the key thing is about our company culture where we really want to go through our values of being, building a company which is relationship first, encourages proactiveness and provides an environment to grow. Uh, as such, we, we focus a lot on mentoring sessions, on sharing skills, and on the freedom to contribute as much as we want. Uh, at the moment, all the members uh, in this team are volu volunteers. We are still not profitable, neither we have received investment yet, uh, but we are going forward with, thanks to the work of every member who, has, who is contributing. At the moment, we are looking mainly for two positions, one position is an experienced business developer person who will be leading sales or marketing aspects here in Japan, looking to connect with, with schools or other institutions who would be interested in using our solution. And at the same time, we are looking for a CTO or an experienced React developer to whom we also offer shares in the company up to a level of uh, co-founder. In any case, for any beginners or interns who would like to join, they are always welcome. We, as I said, we provide an environment to grow, to, to gain experience, to receive mentorship, and also an opportunity to have something on your portfolio, be it from the design point of view, coding, or other aspects. That's the very short introduction from my side. Feel free to contact us at the uh, at the email address info at gmail.com. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Paola. Um, we have around six minutes left for the questions. Mm -hmm. Feel free to ask questions to Paolo about his product stage and uh, 
do you have a working POC? We have Rodrigo we have the core uh, the core logic of the app ready with some bugs that we are still working on, uh, but we don't have the the whole user journey developed. And that's something where, for example, designers would come in handy to help us prototyping it and testing before we actually move it and put it into code. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. Is Adaiba incorporated? Yes, we've incorporated last month as a Kabiksky guy shop. Um, is teaching experience helpful when applying and working at Adaiba? For example, haven't been to university to study education. Uh, I mean, it's not really an application. We don't really have a proper job interview, so to say, because as I said, we don't have, uh, we, are, we can't offer a salary or we can't offer money. Like everyone is a volunteer at this moment. Uh, that being said, having had teaching experience is, uh, or even better, teaching at the moment, having, like being tutoring to someone is definitely a big advantage because it allows, it allows us, it allows you to understand better how to use this app and where it should move, to which direction it should go, and to be part of this conversation internally. Cool. Um, and Paula, since you mentioned about uh, investment, are you currently mm -hmm. right now looking for investors as well, in case we have someone related in our <laughs> audience? Yes, we, we've uh, reached out to SIEV, which is an, uh, the investment branch of Nippon Foundation and are in the process of, are about to start the investment process with them. And uh, we are now getting the last final bits of our uh, investors deck ready before making a public announcement. Oh, amazing, Paolo, very happy for you. Um... I think you won a Japan Hackathon in the past. Oh my God, yeah. wait. Uh, how did you find the competition? How did I find the competition? Uh, Eric in is what asking. Sense to, the, to the Japan Hackathon. Okay, while well, Eric is still typing, does Adaiba allow teachers to create the curriculum or are those curriculum yes. predefined in the app? Uh, simple uploading of PDF or pictures, and Adaiba will take care of sharing that uh, that curriculum with the students how will you acquire users are you looking for partnerships with educational institutes mm -hmm. uh, there's two directions where we want to go one is the b2b direction where we are targeting directly schools or other institutions like jukus akaiwas even training companies and the second one is uh, in we are planning to build sort of some sort of like cafe talk, but for group <laughs> lessons rather than one-on-one -on -one lessons. Um, <laughs> Eric is also interested. Did you find good member mentors? So, uh, oh, as in, I did. I did. We get good mentors in the in the Japan hackathon. Well, uh, there were some mentors who made us think some key points uh, that step uh, the who gave us some good input but I said I mean the whole building of the app has been a continuous process the way it is the way the app is now and the way we are talking about the app now is very different than it was two months ago much less six months ago when we were at the hackathon Cool. you have a very interesting question how did you decide the company name Odaiba doesn't seem to be related to education area <laughs> Uh, it was a sort of like a pun. Uh, originally, the idea was Odaiba as a place to cooperate on homework. So the name was uh, the place of big homework or the place of a lot of homework. Or like Taksan, uh, Dai, uh, Shukudai no Dai, Ba, Basho no Ba. So Odaiba. Okay, some Japanese pun. Um, how did you find the problem you tried to solve? Is it from your experience or did you listen from friends? Uh, it's the initial trigger was uh, seeing a friend sharing her experience after her son had been in, studying from home like for many months in Italy and how she really could feel 
she could see her his motivation every day going down. And he's, he was a boy who was like very good motivated. He really liked school, but studying from home was really a terrible experience. And as days passes, it became more and more difficult. And this was very much shared by many people that I talked with. And also talking with teachers, they see, they see it themselves. Like you have uh, students who they are trying to do their best or they have their their parents pushing them behind and they're, they're sort of paying attention during lesson. And then there are other students who immediately after five minutes, they're gone. And this uh, makes, like this is going to increase inequality in the long run. Uh, and that's a very key, that's a very problematic thing that is happening right now. So also that's, this is why also we are trying to bring th these tools to the teacher to be able to follow the progress and to have the students engaged online as a group. Oh, and Paul, very, very quickly, last question. Mm -hmm. Any UX design journey info we might take a look at? Ooh. Oh, I did not put them here in the slides. Maybe you can share it afterwards if you have any links uh, in the chat. Uh, let me see if I have them in the other. Okay, can you see my screen still? Yep. Yeah. So just very quickly, this would be the screen of teacher talking with the other students. Then this would be an example of a collaboration session where different students are work are taking turns to work on a shared uh, assignment. And then on the other side, the teacher can follow the progress of all these groups, all this assignment, as they are filling them out in real time and join whichever group call. Cool. Thank you so much, Paul. And the time is over. For those of you guys who have still some questions, I believe that uh, Paolo will share his contacts. And you also can send him a question uh, through the chat. Uh, thank you so much for your time, Paolo, and I'm happy to welcome the next speaker, uh, Tetra Aviation Araisan. Please go ahead and share your screen. Just in case we can't hear anything. Can you hear me? Yep, now it's okay. Okay, uh, thank you for the opportunity. <laughs> I'm sorry to wait. Uh, to come into our room. <laughs> so um, I'm uh, Hidemi. Um, I'm working at the Tetra Aviation. We are creating a new aircraft. It's called Ibito. So we are looking for avionics engineers, power electrics engineers, and the uh, structure design engineers. I will share you uh, our website after this presentation. Please contact you from a uh, contact from this website. So yes, our uh, development policy is: um, Are you moving fast enough? Our founders' task want to move quickly and smooth traffic. So because in Tokyo or any other countries and in any other cities so crowded and it has uh, many traffic jams. So we, uh, do, uh, we want to solve these problems <laughs> and we can save, so uh, we, if we solve these problems, we can save time and it's good for a business or private or save risks. And it, we have a, a, lot of, a lot of what you want to do and what do I want to say, but uh, today is not so much time. So just I really want to say we are focusing on uh, creating a small and very quiet and single seat aircraft. So there has a three types of um, mobility market. We are focused on uh, personal, but maybe someone uh, already she knows uh, a Joby or a Polocopter or any other event or uh, startup companies from overseas. These uh, uh, they want to do uh, air taxi or they call someone called UAM, urban air mobility. And one, one more thing is the uh, structure. 
like um, yeah, network or any other one. But we are focused on only a uh, personal one. And there has uh, three types of the market. It depends on what. Uh, Depend on uh, uh, <laughs> distance to move. We are focused on like uh, 20, 200 miles, uh, 160 kilometers distance we want to move. And um, uh, it's a product for theory, advanced sim and dependable and a little bit extreme experience. And uh, we have a, uh, we got a prize at uh, GoFly Prize. It's uh, supported by Boeing and it has a uh, last year we have a contest. And our movie is on YouTube. After that, I will share you um, well, you are very so please look at this. And at first we are, targeting to uh, amateur uh, aircraft market. It is uh, so many people and um, over a thousand, uh, uh, mm, 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 a lot of, <laughs> lot of <laughs> amateur airplane coming to a uh, famous uh, event. And uh, uh, we have a, a lot of technology and what I want to explain, but it's not so time. So if you apply to us, I, we want to explain. Uh, uh, yes, <laughs> and he's uh, our founder, Tasuke Nakai. He's a university student, and uh, we have uh, eight staff. And director is only me and Nak Tasuke, and so many uh, people. And of course, we have uh, an advisor from EXFAA and mentors and. Um, Yes, we are hiring these people. Maybe uh, we are based on uh, Minami Soma city in Fukushima and uh, Toda city in Saitama. So, uh, and we are, uh, we want to, uh, we are, uh, we focused on value, a diversity team. Of, uh, I'm a Korean, but I can't speak Korean, but um, um, another people working at the Korean and Indian people. And of course, we may, I we want to uh, welcome to our women. So thank you so much. <laughs> thank you so much, and I saw it was a great speech. Thank you so much, you did well. Um, so can you please go back to the slide with the job openings? Yes. Uh, maybe we have to, uh, we should share our website. Um, oh, it's okay. Um, just uh, can you ask some, uh, some people asking in details mm -hmm. about the jobs that you are hiring for? Yes, yes, can yes, you please yes, yes, tell yes. us one more time? Uh, hiring people like um, this one, and power electronics engineer, and avionics engineer, and um, structural design engineer. So we are hardware startups. So now we don't have a position to a web engineer. And maybe later we want to hiring an autonomous engineer or system, something flight system engineer. Cool. Are you hiring for full-time yes, positions, part-time? Full-time, part and um, if you want, part-time job is okay. And um, basically, we are so uh, hardware startup. No, so everybody coming to uh, uh, office in Saitama, but some people uh, working from home, structuring engineering maybe sometimes working from home. And, Thank you. You have, uh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. you have a question. Um, do you consider applications from university graduates uh, with relevant experience? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, anything. Uh, 
if you have a passion, uh, we don't care about it. And of course, we have to um, requirement. We have a requirement for our skills, but most important things is uh, passion. Thank you. Um, question: How is regulation in Japan for air personal mobility? Mm, that's a good, good question. Today, before noon, we have a um, conference with um, so many, many, many people, and they want to. Uh, they want to do. Uh, they want to change regulation and make a regulation, new regulation, until. Osaka Expo 2025, um, maybe mostly almost changing, <laughs> I think. So, and um, but uh, we don't, we at first we are uh, try to US market for an uh, amateur, uh, amateur category, uh, usually everybody called general aviation. So we are not depending on a Japanese regulation. We, we are trying to take um, US FAA regulation. Thank you. And last question, because we have time running out. Could you tell us a bit more about why you want to solve this problem? Hmm. We don't think it's uh replace something some some transportation we um we want to go um, we are making a new transport ways and it's a one thing to people who want to move in um, why why our boss usually said, I want to move quickly. Um, of course, we uh, it's uh, good for ESG or SDGs, I know. But maybe people, most people's passion not depend on like, um, uh, not only ESG, I think. It's a difficult question, but thank you so <laughs> Um, thank you. Thank you so Hi. much. Um, Hi. thank you so much, Raisan. The time mm -hmm. is over, but uh, you have some question in the chat. Feel free to answer later okay. in the chat. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank and you. we are moving to the next speaker. Um, I am welcoming Maxim from Sus Robo. Maxim, feel free to go on stage. Right. I'm sharing something. Can you guys see it? Yeah, we can see it. We can hear you. <laughs> Great. All right. Well, it's hard to follow up the flying, flying personal flying devices, but I'll try to <laughs> much more modest um, products. Can you guys see the slide? Yes. <clears throat> Great. So we are the company called Susurobo. So we're still at our registration stage right now, basically this next week, literally. Um, um, we are a voice platform uh, services uh, provider and a voice media company. Our headquarters are in Osaka. Uh, we have some representation in Tokyo and sometimes in San Francisco. All right. So what do we do? So we provide uh, the... Um, product called Lively AI, which is a conversational AI cloud platform. Um, so simple uh, in simple terms, it's something that can power chatbots, but our difference is that um, we believe that the future is with a conversational technology that is uh, uh, character-based. So you're speaking not just with something like a robotic voice, but with a character that has a personality, emotions, uh, for example, like if you want to do like Kumamoto tourism chatbot, you know, you would probably use Kumamoto, you know, and uh, uh, we uh, aspire to provide uh, the back end for those services. Um, that's something that can, come, can that can come handy in cars now that cars start 
you know, having a, a voice interfaces. Also, how's uh, uh, home electronics devices and uh, social robots, uh, as well as smart speakers. As you know, like in Japan, there is a smart speaker that has like this virtual character in it called uh, Gatebox. Right, so more specifically, we have this for people who are familiar with natural language processing. We have like all typical natural language processing kind of boxes here to understand and generate natural language. But also in addition to this typical combination, we have uh, something we call like behavior generation, which is actually can drive an animated character or a robot in sync with the speech. So we did, you know, some of us uh, had jobs before, so we kind of worked on robots and uh, social uh, uh, kind of robots and avatars for education. Um, and uh, like Wally is there, um, uh, Alexa and like kind of Google Home uh, a skill company. Yeah, some products are more famous than us. As you can see, um, right. I'm trying to go to the next slide. Okay. Uh oh, what happened? Did I crash? We already know how you look like. Okay. Okay. You can see. Yeah. So this is our team. So this is three, like, uh, yeah, uh, three guys so far. Um, so that's me, and uh, we have our Rio works in business side uh, in Tokyo, and Amir works from Toronto. He is a kind of speech and machine learning engineer. All right, so next slide, please. So that's what we are looking for, uh, kind of, so let me kind of, I forgot to say like, so here, as you can see, like all these boxes are kind of like typical, but we have this editor at the bottom, um, which is like uh, the key of the system. Uh, basically of the platform is a no code editor so that you don't have to, you know, hire engineer to, um, kind of write your uh, like conversational agent software. Uh, you can be a designer or a content uh, writer, you know, and you can write uh, basically the character. So we're hiring somebody who can help us to develop this kind of editor. So this is a front end job. So somebody who is passionate about having no code interfaces, you know, to develop the, uh, to drive this back end basically to develop content for the back end, or so it could be a front end engineer or a designer who you know can write some code that also works. So right now we're using uh, React uh, and our back end is AWS. So some knowledge of that would be a plus. Um, some of our models is MMD for those who like into 3D graphics and um, yeah, just say hi and connect to LinkedIn even if you don't apply. Thank you. Cool. Thank you so much, Maxim. Um, mm -hmm. Guys, we still have um, five minutes. Feel free to ask your questions to Maxim. Uh, Maxim, can you please elaborate on the job opening? Is it um, a full time, right. part time uh, yeah, volunteer? Such a bad uh, job uh, a recruiter. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this is we we still registering. We we are not funded, so we are like kind of volunteers. Uh, so ideally, yeah, we would make some sort of arrangement, like um, you know maybe equity or like delayed pay. You know, we would find the way to compensate, basically you except for cash right now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's the situation, and uh, that's so because of that, we are not looking for somebody who is uh, you know can join full time unless you have, you know, a lot of means to support yourself and a lot of passion, but like a part-time, you know, kind of involvement, uh, like a day or two per week, maybe it would be sufficient, I think, at this stage. And what is your revenue model? Right, so it's gonna be a platform, like a cloud service, software as a service. So we're gonna charge subscription fees and uh, fees per API access. We also develop our own, I don't mention the presentation, we also develop kind of, our own uh, user-facing applications like uh, Alexa skills that are using our own platform. And uh, we plan to have some uh, in-app products there. So hopefully we'll have some sales there as well. 
what is the roadmap like ahead for deployment development? That's a good question. Yeah. So we are right now, basically, uh, we have uh, some components of this uh, system uh, operational already, like as a minimally viable products. So we are now courting our first uh, users um, so that, uh, you know, we can start deploying it and get some user data from somebody outside of our own company. Uh, so we are raising seed round right now. So we're kind of looking to hire maybe a couple of engineers in the near future if we are successful uh, to raise the funds. Uh, so that will should help us to complete the whole system, basically all the components and uh, uh, get more customers. <laughs> Can you give us a user journey of what a great conversation would sound like with an AI agent built on Robo? What a great conversation, example of great conversation. You just listened to my presentation, uh, but uh, <laughs> I mean, this is not a, it's a monologue and bad joke, sorry. But uh, um, yeah, so the example would be is, uh, well, we have it here is Miku Hatsune, right? So the good conversation would be like, you would talk with a character, right? So the character would use, uh, she would use her own voice. She would use her, you know, like a dialect. Uh, she's from Hokkaido, so she might speak with a certain Hokkaido dialect. Uh, she would express her emotion and personality, you know, and in case of Kumamon, you know, similarly, like Kumamon, here we have a Kumamon picture. So he's from uh, like Kumamoto, right? So there's a Kumamoto dialect, I believe. Um, and the eventual vision, of course, is to have like artificial creatures that can, you know, behave very naturally. Oh, and let's have a last question. There are many similar services from big conglomerates. What is your competitive advantage? Oh, uh, yeah, that's a, a question we get asked often. And uh, uh, the first of all, like uh, basically, like the combination of services that we provide, like no other provider does. That is a not only natural language services, but also the virtual character services, you know, because this is a character that moves, expresses itself, and also speaks and understands language. So this combination is kind of non-existent right now in the market. So you have to use two or three services to kind of, and patch them together, uh, which is a lot of engineering work. So we provide something that is like packaged as a single service. Um, no, the last question will be, how is the copyright of the character? I mean, we don't make characters, right? So we just uh, provide the API to move characters and to, to make characters speak. Cool. Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Maxim. Um, Thank you. Feel free to share your contacts and uh, the website in the chat. And also if people have any other questions, uh, they might ask you mm -hmm. uh, via chat as well. I'm happy to welcome the next speaker, Alex from Kakawa Shares. Alex, please uh, go ahead. Hello, everyone. I'll be sharing my presentation. Please give me a second. All right. All right. Uh, can you see the, can everyone see the screen? Yep, we can see it, we can hear you. Okay, thanks. Uh, well, uh, good evening, everyone. Thank you for, for inviting us today. My name is Alex, and I want to talk to you about Cacao Shares. Uh, our tagline or our slogan is the chocolate blockchain. Um, and it's because uh, we run a traceability system for fine cacao or cocoa beans. Um, so I want to start from, from there, a little bit of the, the story of, of our project. Um, this picture that you see here, it's actually the star of our project. This is a cacao pod or a cacao fruit. Uh, thanks to this fruit, uh, we have chocolate in the world. Uh, this fruit mainly grows in tropical regions and worldwide, but it was originated in Venezuela. Uh, 
a, a very far away country, not, not far from Brazil and Colombia. And uh, because it originated in this part, many exotic varieties has, have spawned in, in Venezuela. This is, I'm talking about the wild cacao, you know, millions of years ago. Uh, unfortunately, uh, some of these varieties are disappearing because of, you know, different factors, uh, um, apathy or, or, or climate change, etc. So we choose, uh, and, and enough to say, of course, that uh, this fruit not only uh, is good for chocolate, but it's also a multi-million dollar industry that uh, besides of fueling uh, luxury lifestyles and huge corporations, it means the livelihood of about uh, 50 million families worldwide. So we identified the need of uh, creating a traceability that allows us to document and to provide uh, information from the source to the end user about this product. This next picture that you see here, uh, I want to explain a little bit of the philosophy of our company. It's the reason why our logo, this is the logo of our company, it's like this. This is essentially a cacao pot cut in half. Inside this, you will have little seeds that are dried in the sun, then roasted or transported, of course, all to many places in the world and made into chocolate. Uh, and this is why um, uh, we're talking today about uh, working opportunities or, or, or uh, collaboration opportunities with cacao shares. Uh, this is essentially an ecology project, okay? We, of course, are working on technology. We're using the blockchain to provide this traceability, essentially the database where we register um, our crops is um, blockchain uh, in Ethereum. It's, in, it's an Ethereum smart contract, but uh, our initial aim is ecology. Uh, of course, we also aim to provide a livelihood or to provide markets for uh, small scale growers, initially in Venezuela. Uh, the two pentagons mean one side means the market or the export business, while the yellow pentagon means the forest. We have a goal of making a forest with one million cacao trees that will be connected to this database that uh, we are talking about. Um, we are incorporated in Japan. We incorporated in May 2019, and uh, we have uh, we started with a capital of about a one million yen, and then we immediately adjusted it a little bit to made uh, six million yen. Uh, right now, the name of the company is Sabaseba Kabushiki Kaisha. And uh, our business model, I'm just going to exceed a little bit of the time, is essentially operating farms. We create and operate agroforestry systems. We started with a collaboration with a farm in Venezuela called uh, Patanemo. This is in central Venezuela. And we exported, that's one of our achievements, uh, we exported in the beginning of 2020, five tons of cacao to Japan, which we are right now presenting as some kind of promotional lot. Um, uh, I'm sorry for the presentation being so short, okay? Regarding the jobs, we are looking for any help we can get, okay? <laughs> From community management to crowdfunding to mentorships. And uh, of course, uh, a lot of uh, customization. Japan is very specific. But uh, please, uh, uh, welcome to your questions and sorry for exceeding the time a little bit. Thank you, Alex, for your presentations. Guys, feel free to ask a question. Um, just a bit elaborating on the job. So you say uh, you need someone from community manager to... Yes, we're looking essentially for any kind of uh, help, but uh, mainly right now we are looking for community management in Japan. Uh, also uh, mentors, business mentors, uh, crowd, crowdfunding or copywriters, copywriters in Japanese. And um, of course, uh, some uh, uh, usability experts, ideally so, uh, in Japan. 
uh, just to align uh, with expectations of people, are those full-time, part-time, paid, non-paid uh, job mm, openings? There are, there are a couple of paid jobs. Uh, for example, the community manager, of course, and uh, the, all, all, everything with programming, it depends on the availability of the person and the skills. The mentors, I think mainly uh, ad honorem, uh, but of course, it, it, we, we'll see how the, the relationships evolve because uh, I, I know every case is specific. So that's why I didn't bring any particular uh, job offer because uh, I, of course I want to share our story and see uh, who would be interested in learning more. And from there, we can have a conversation. You have a question, I assume, do you have jobs in IoT? Um, not exactly right now. We, we, our concept has a lot to do with IoT. Uh, but uh, we have that in the implementation side. That's mainly in, in, in Venezuela. We have a, right now a cacao forest in Venezuela with about 50,000 trees where uh, 2,000 are tagged. So we use a small RFID device and uh, that's, that's, that part is covered and it's, it's on Venezuela side. For Japan side, we are considering a lot of um, making uh, uh, usability, like convert this data that we have in a very presentable way for the local uh, B2B users mainly. Uh, what is a working uh, language in your team? For example, for community manager, is it English, uh, uh, Japanese, Spanish? In, uh, inside, we will be, of course, uh, communicating either in English or, or Japanese, but for the front end or the community side, we aim at uh, communicating in Japanese. So we want someone who is really good with the local uh, uh, particularities of, you know, Keigo and all these things, Omotenashi, we, it's crucial for us to have. Uh, our, our you have a, sorry, you have a question. Are you affected by the political instability in Venezuela? Uh, uh, well, of course, of course, yes, of course, yes. Uh, there is a very special management uh, to do business with Venezuela right now. Uh, but fortunately, we have an excellent team there. We are not uh related to the neither of the two venezuelan governments so we just operate as a private organization and fortunately it's it's all right and the last question what would you say is the core business of your company it seems you cover almost all the supply chain from owning the farms to export import into japan and distribution well, uh it's we, we have a big dream we have a big dream and as i mentioned this is starts as an ecology project. We want to make a forest and rescue rare or exotic varieties of cacao trees. And to make this operational, we have been since 2017 bootstrapping, okay? Identifying revenue streams. And uh, the revenue stream that we choose to start was to export cacao beans to Japan. So that's why we started. And we brought a promotion a lot to Japan and we have been doing a lot of promotion even despite of coronavirus. Um, in 2020, we've been out there, you know, showing, talking to people, you know, get, making relationships with chocolate, chocolate makers and it's been well received. Of course, our ultimate dream is to make this a traceability platform for, for chocolate or for the agroforestry community. Thank you so much, Alex. Um, and you still have a question in the chat. Please answer it afterwards. Um, thank you so much. And thank you. Thank you, everyone. The... Thanks, Sasha, for inviting. <laughs> thank you. Um, I'm happy to welcome the next speaker. Um, Alex, yes. could you please stop sharing your screen? Good. Thank you. I'm welcoming Azarel from Mirashere. Hi. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you, but can't see your slides so far. Okay, I'm sharing my screen. I'm not sharing my screen. Sorry, this uh, doesn't let me.
you are co-host, so you definitely can share. I think it's my computer. Sorry, apologies for the. I think this might be. I'm having a small trouble with the security issues of the computers. Uh, uh, would you mind if we go to the next speaker and I solve it first? Yep, sure, no worries. Um, okay, uh, Discovery Deep Japan, Sarah, please go ahead. Yep. The floor is yours. Uh, Yep, we can see. Yep, very well. All right, just two seconds. All right, so hi everyone. My name is Sera Yun. I'm the founder and CEO of Discover Deep Japan. Oops. So as you may have noticed from my name, I am a migrant. I am Danish Korean. And because of my minority backgrounds, I always felt that I was not normal and I was uh, pressured to fit in. And also I felt like I didn't belong anywhere. And um, because of my minority backgrounds, I was bullied at school and I, I fell into depression and delinquency. Um, but I believe that this is not just my story, but a common story shared by many people, including maybe some of, uh, some of yourselves. And um, in Japan, um, about, uh, there was a survey conducted by the Ministry of Justice and uh, about 40% of the respondents answered that they faced housing discrimination because of their foreign backgrounds. And um, about 30% experienced discriminatory speech and about 25% experienced employment discrimination uh, because of their foreign backgrounds. You know, at the core of this issue is the negative stereotypes against foreigners. So depending on where you come from, your nationality, um, you know, your appearance, you might be considered low skilled, you might be considered lazy or loud at night or canceled rubbish, etc. And that's why I found the Discover Deep Japan to, um, to address this issue. So Discover Deep Japan is a social startup that seeks to build a more inclusive world. We do this by bridging Japan with the world through digital marketing. We, we seek to um, promote cross-cultural communication and, uh, and foster mutual respect and trust. And by doing so, we are trying to shift the narrative to transform these negative stereotypes into positive images. So more concretely, we uh, find foreign customers for our clients in the countryside. And uh, we, we find foreign customers for their tourist attractions and local products. So we build uh, websites for them and we manage their social media accounts. And then we also help them with cross-border e-commerce. So these are our products. So we, we design uh, the client's website. We uh, post uh, destination related um, you know, articles on their own social media accounts. And we also promote destination and local products on our own platform. So the uh, online advertising market is growing and is projected to reach about 2.8 trillion yen in 2023. And in terms of positioning, uh, our competitors, they focus on major destinations and companies, whereas uh, Discover Deep Japan um, focuses on hidden destinations of the beaten path uh, uh, places. So our strength is our global team. So we have uh, people from different backgrounds who bring in different skill sets to the table. So our future plans, currently we focus on digital marketing, especially website design and social media marketing. But in the future, we are planning to build our own digital media on, on website and on mobile app. 
to increase our advertising uh, revenues. So who are we are looking for? We're looking for a chief technology officer who can oversee the development and management of our digital media and also head of sales to oversee the uh, operations to, to get more clients for our social media and uh, website design services and project manager and content creators. Yeah, thank you so much for listening and I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Cool. Um, thank you so much uh, for your presentation. Will you be looking for app developers? Yes, we are. Um, can you please elaborate on that? So what kind of tech stack are you planning to work with? Or it's uh, not decided not yet? Not decided yet, but uh, we have, uh, so we've been accepted to uh, Impact Tech Nippon Foundation Acceleration Program, just like Odaiba. And we get credits for Amazon Web Services and also uh, Google Cloud. So it will be great if for uh, uh, the engineers are familiar with these servers. Um, are those full-time positions, part-time, paid, non-paid? So most of our positions are full-time and paid, but uh, depending on their availability, we can also do part-time as well. Uh, are those remote or you uh, want everyone to come to office? Where is the office, by the way? So we have uh, three offices, one in, in uh, greater Tokyo area, one in Niigata and one in uh, Fukuoka. So uh, preferably, you know, close to these three locations, uh, but uh, we have someone who is working from Okinawa, completely remote and also from Hyogo. So depending on the positions, uh, remote positions are possible. Yeah. What language do you use at work and with clients? So at work, it's completely English and uh, Japanese, uh, is used with uh, clients. Um, so some people asking about, uh, do you have any job openings for digital marketers and designers? So I would say uh, content creators, uh, you know, including designers, so visual storyteller, photographer, designers, would uh, we are looking for these people. And digital marketers like who does uh, like uh, social media, like growth hacking, etc. We also look in. Um, what should be the Japanese level of content creators? Content creators, uh, none. No Japanese is required. However, project manager and head of sales, these are uh, uh, the positions that require a very high level of Japanese. Uh, for a CTO, is there any language requirement? Uh, no. Um, remote position also internationally possible? Yes. Cool. I'm happy that someone is joining us from overseas. Um, question from Ricardo. What investors are backing you financially? Is it already profitable from customer revenue? So we are already profitable. So we've been incorporated since 2019. And uh, we are profitable on the uh, digital marketing services side. So website design and uh, uh, digital, uh, you know, social media marketing, et cetera. But uh, uh, so we're looking to raise capital uh, specifically to build our digital media. And, and that uh, yeah, requires some funding. Cool. And uh, let's take last question. How has COVID-19 impact uh, tourism sector, especially in those hidden destinations? Yes, so uh, very, very good question. So it's it's very tough for our some of our clients. And uh, so we actually were focusing on inbound tourism market at the beginning, but uh, since COVID-19 happened, we added some other aspects of digital marketing, such as selling local products to foreign customers. So uh, yes, it it's, has impacted our business. Thank you so much, uh, Sarah. And um, I know that some people have questions about positions. Looks like they're very interested to join. Feel yeah. free to ask your questions to Sarah in the chat. And also, I think Sarah will share his yes. uh, will share uh, their contacts in the chat as well. Um,
thank you so much. We are moving to the next. Uh, thank you so much for your questions. Speaker, um, Azarel, are you with us? Yeah. Cool. Make sure now. Um, yeah, we can. Um, we can hear you. Please uh, try to share your screen. Okay. One sec. You can see now? Yes. Okay. Um, all right, so I would like to share. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for the time and for all the speakers. So I'm Nazareth from mid -Eyshare, and I would like to uh, share what we're doing now, what is our current recruiting available positions. So mid -Eyshare, it was born four years ago and we have three small offices in all over Japan. We are a small startup of super engineers and we are the market leaders in demand response in trans transport solutions. So we bring on-demand transport solutions to our, our clients all over Japan, as well as out of Japan. So we are a very, very tiny startup yet since last year, we are on the black and we are actually growing fast our team. So we are at the moment recruiting for several positions. And we are definitely a fast growing company. So we are looking forward for everyone applications. So our main product is called SAPS, it's more access vehicle service. And it's a platform that includes a backend and front end services for these on demand, uh, the on demand responsive transport. So what we basically do in short, we just have our transport know-how about how public transport, taxis, is it and uh, logistics and so on can be bring together and what are the current needs regarding demand uh, on demand transport, which is basically for rural areas where public transport is too expensive, or for big towns where public transport is required on demand re uh, responsive transport for traceability. We have our one of the most advanced AS in the market, and it was actually programmed by engineers at different uh, high institutions of Japan, and we have an inclusive design that we actually, we are high now in our, in our recruiting policy. We are looking for our inclusive team, a very diverse team. And we put that all things together, then we get our SaaS, Smart Access Vehicle Services. So we are only missing one thing to make this a perfect solution, which is you. We need, you are your ingredient X that we are looking forward to. And what we are at the moment looking for, we have at the moment two open types of positions and many more to come uh, soon. We are looking for backend engineers to support our data infrastructure for our platform. And we are also looking for researchers to improve our products. And we're also open for sales positions, design positions, and so on uh, in the very ne near future. So one important thing is that uh, we are a very tiny startup. We are about 10 people, uh, 10, 15 people, mostly from the IT sector, and we are uh, mostly Japanese. So our common language is Japanese. So we do require uh, Japanese that is good enough to talk to the team and to understand the team. Do not We do not require a native Japanese, but we do also do require a conversational English that can actually also integrate the whole team together. Overall, we are looking for people with experience, but we are very much open to not experience. And in fact, we do evaluate most uh, not to have experience, but to have a genuine interest in the future of mobility. So if you have a very, very uh, background, a very interesting background on mobility, transport, and you know what is going on in Japan and out of Japan, for us, this is more important than any teachable uh, IT skills you may have. But of course, we do value experience as well. We provide a very competitive salary. We provide a full time, uh, although we are also open for part time jobs. And we are very much looking forward for people who wants to apply to that. So I invite everyone to know more to uh, to know more about our company at their website. Also, feel free to contact me through email, add me on LinkedIn, and let me know any questions you may have. So thank you very much. Cool. Thank you so much, Israel, for your presentation. Guys, feel free to ask all your questions about the the job openings, about the products. Um, uh, so you guys based in Yokohama, right? 
Yeah, so all our so since the beginning, all our company is working remotely. We have people over Japan. We have people in Hakodate in Yokohama. So uh, we do have our main office in Yokohama, but uh, this will be a full remote work. So we are very much open for that. Cool. And looks like someone is already interested in the researcher's position. How can I apply? So do you, people have to send CVs directly to you or what is the application process? So at the moment, some of these positions, we actually will hire them on our LinkedIn website. So my suggestion is that if you find that position through LinkedIn, Phil, it's better for us if you apply through there because we have some timelines that it makes our life easier to find you. Uh, otherwise, feel free to send me your CV through my email, which is available in the in this slide. And uh, you feel free to also contact me on LinkedIn. If you forget about where, where is my email, just feel free to contact on LinkedIn. And for the researcher, we for both positions, we want a CV. Uh, we do appreciate if it is no more than two pages, but this is just for us. So feel free to send more. And if you if you're applying for a researcher position, we do appreciate if you can show us our portfolio, show us what you have done, show us even if you are a backend engineer, show us what you have done. Anything what you have done is actually good. Any experience is actually good, even if it is not, if it is not transport, even if it is not programming. You are teaching us well, how to do things. We will we we want you on your team. What kind of educational background you're looking for a researcher's position? So for a researcher, we definitely were looking for someone who has experience on simulation, multi-agent simulation, and, and that we are very much open. We're not going through the languages as much as we go about the knowledge. So we are looking for people who has probably experience in academia or uh, operational research. Cool. How about data scientists? The question yeah, is so uh, data scientists is perfectly is is fits very well researcher position of course we actually we if you are data scientist you probably will have more perks if you have experience with uh, um, spatial simulation um is it a full-time job how long would be the contract it's still about researcher so our full-time positions, uh, normally they are uh, undefined, so undefined. Uh, so there's no specific time, but of course we are happy to discuss if someone is looking for a short-term position. What kind of design roles can we expect in the future? So we are working at the moment and we are expanding that in the future on integration between our clients' uh, systems or us. So we have a short uh, front end design that we would like to span. And we are looking for uh, UX, which is not specifically designed by UX. And we are looking, you know, we may look in the future soon for more uh, app, um, apply, um, sorry, application, uh, application uh, design. Cool. Thank you so much. And um... Yeah, the last question, does the UX position require Japanese? Sorry? Does the UX position require Japanese? So as I say, everyone in the company or most people in the company are Japanese. So our Japanese requirement is basically to be able to, to communicate with the team. Uh, but uh, we definitely, we require some degree of Japanese, but we welcome a uh, people who are not native and we definitely we would like to have people that also speak English. Cool. Thank you so much for your questions, Guy. Thank you so much, Azrael. Um, feel free to look back to the chat when you have free time, if someone comes uh, with another question to you. And we are moving to the last uh, speaker of tonight's. Um, I'm so happy to see uh, the people staying with us that long. Um, with Jay from Unseen, uh, please go ahead. The floor is yours. Yeah. Can you guys uh, see my screen now? Yep. OK, thanks a lot. So uh, thanks thanks a lot, Sasha and Levagon, for uh, you know organizing this, as well as giving us this opportunity. And uh, thanks uh, for guys who are staying back, despite you know us being the last, <laughs> the last presentation. So. Uh, so uh, myself, I'm uh, Vijay from Unseen. So what we do is uh, we create a simple and intuitive 3D presentation product. Now, uh, before we talk about the product, I first want to introduce a little bit about uh, you know the company and uh, you know what we're trying to do here in the long term. 
So our long-term mission is to make sharing ideas in 3D simple for anyone. I have to uh, give you a little bit of context of this. So even now, it's possible to create you know, great looking 3D contents. Uh, for example, like you can use Unity for, create, for creating games or use Maya for making animation films. You can use uh, SolidWorks to, you know, uh, for your engineering designs, but these are tools for experts. Uh, we think that the, the potential for 3D content is huge. And uh, what we like to do is that we want to build, create, we want to build tools for normal people, like people like us, you know, who can actually use the power of 3D without actually, you know, spending a lot of time learning these tools. Um, so what would be the, some, some of the possibilities? So if, if, if it's possible for anyone to create 3D content, like I, I believe school teachers would be, you know, using 3D contents to create contents for, for, this, for, the, for the classes or marketers from manufacturing industries, you know, they might be using um, uh, 3D uh, to uh, explain the core technologies and features of the product. Doctors could use uh, 3D, uh, like C CT or MRI scan data to talk to their clients, uh, to talk to their patients about potential uh, diagnosis as well as treatment methods. And in future, um, if, you know, Apple and Facebook in the next 10 years, you know, if they come up with their own AR glass kind of devices, uh, the potential use cases might be even more, uh, you know, it, it's gonna be, it's gonna get even more wider with, with AR tour guides or restaurant menus being in hologram or AR. So all these things uh, could be possible in the future. So what we're doing right now is that um, at, at present, we are building a, a product with a manufacturing industry um, uh, as 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 an initial target user, however, like we've already got a lot of interest, uh, you know, people signing up from education as well as construction and healthcare industries for a uh, for a tool in our website. But you know, for at least for the initial release, we want to just focus on manufacturing and probably expand uh, to other sectors in the next uh, coming years. And when the time is right, when there's a very comfortable AR glass that uh, you know hopefully happens in the next uh, after five years or so that, that that's the point we want to expand to um, uh, other kind of use cases so what's what's the big deal about manufacturing you know what's the big problem that we are solving in manufacturing industry in simple words it's very hard to leverage uh, 3d cad models which are already present in these companies for communication so in the last 20 years uh, across manufacturing industry you'll see the transition from 2d cad to 3d cad kind of uh, um, softwares for designing products it's mainly because it's you know if you just look at these pictures you can understand it's very intuitive to understand uh, visually it's, it's intuitive to understand the 3D CAD designs. Now the problem is that at the at present these uh, 3D CAD softwares are only used within uh, engineering teams. So the engineers use it to communicate with each other. However, outside engineering team it's hardly being used. Uh, to dive a little bit more deeper, for example, uh, manufacturers while talking to their customers. You know, there's marketing and sales team creating promotion materials and marketing materials. Uh, sales team, they need to create uh, you know, design proposals, uh, all, all sales proposals for the clients. Could use 3D CAD models in these kind of use cases. But also engineering teams trying to communicate with the service teams for you know uh, maintenance instructions or assembly and repair instruction, as well as to the assembly lines uh, for certain for for certain work 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 instructions. So in all these scenarios, uh, 3D CAD could be leveraged for communicating. So what is the current solution? Uh, you know, it's very easy to think about like PowerPoint, yay. So people can just take screenshots and put it in a PowerPoint and you know, create documents. Um, or you can use three, you can, you can uh, make PDF of the uh, technical drawings that you have and uh, send it to your customers or send it to your um, um, colleagues. But the problem here is that it's, it's, it's um, you know, this, this could actually lead to miscommunication because it's very hard to get the same image uh, on everyone's mind by just by looking at the screenshots or technical illustrations. So if, if people want to use 3D, why don't they use 3D CAD softwares? Now the problem is that, you know, these softwares are really designed for designing products, not really for communicating. So you can't really add explaining explanation contents on top of these models using these softwares. It's also very hard to share because, you know, sometimes you need a very powerful machine to run these softwares it, and it, the license is expensive, costs about $1,500 a year. So not everybody has a software to open these kind of files. And it also has a steep learning curve. I mean, if you just look at the UI, it's pretty confusing. It's not like uh, you can just share this with anyone and, and, and expect them to like learn how to navigate this kind of UIs. So our approach is basically to create a simple and intuitive 3D presentation tool. So what does that look like? So let me just uh, walk you through our concept video. So, so basically it's a browser-based uh, product. So once the user comes to our, um, logs into our website, they can upload their existing 3D CAD file. Uh, we'll render it 
And just like in PowerPoint, you have multiple slides, we have multiple frames. And in each frame, uh, once you set a camera angle, you can add text, uh, photos, or other kind of uh, uh, shapes to basically make your point. And uh, once you created multiple frames, you can enter the presentation mode and just click the next button and it goes through each of these frames. And uh, you can share this with your colleagues just by sharing a URL so they don't have to install any kind of app uh, to, to view this kind of content. Uh, you can use it for you know manuals or uh, work instructions or uh, marketing uh, content. So I'll skip through that. Now, so what are we right now? So we started in 2019. Uh, Long-term goal always has been to make it easy for everyone to create 3D uh, AR content. So initially we started as an AR content creation platform, uh, but we pivoted to a 3D presentation tool like uh, about July this year. Uh, we already raised uh, a few hundred thousand dollars uh, from investors like East Ventures. Um, and we already got, I think in, in the, as of October, we had about 300 or so pre-registrations on our website. Now I think it's past 450 or so. Right now we are running a beta program with 20 or so selected customers. Um, and if they are happy, we'll go ahead with the official release in, in June, 2021. Uh, the team, it's just three of us full-time. Um, so I usually take care of product. My colleague, Satoshi, he, 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 has, he has a lot of experience when it comes to uh, sales, uh, working with manufacturers. And uh, our only full-time engineer, Kenny, he used to work with us in my last company. And um, he worked at eight years in Google as a fresh graduate. That's pretty good what he's doing. So. Uh, so why don't you join Unseen? So this is the right time to join a company. We have enough cash for sustaining a small five member team for the next 15 months or so. Uh, but we are looking for talented engineers who are you know, excited about, excited about you know, making it easy for everyone to create 3D contents. So if you look at our website, uh, you'll find a job description. So if you go to our website, if you click jobs, um, there's a small introduction page and there's this one opening, which is basically a lead software engineer role uh, you, uh, you know, we don't, we don't, re as long as you have built a web product with hundreds of so tens of thousands of users, I think, uh, and, and if you have strong fundamentals in computer science, I, I think we're interested in speaking with you. Um, so what you'll be doing, you'll be basically working with the product team, basically myself and the design and product designer to basically understand what exactly is the problem of users and then prototyping different product ideas or solutions we have and testing with them and then building a full scale product. Right. So I think uh, that's it from my side. So I'll be, I'll take, I'll take questions from now on. I guess I, I had a long presentation, I guess. Sorry for that. Thank you so much, uh, Vijay. Um, well, people still type in the questions. Uh, so where um, is your company based? Where do you expect people to come to work? That's a good question. So uh, we, we have an office in Shibuya. Uh, so we work from our office mostly. Um, so we would uh, we would only be able to work with people who are already based in Tokyo or willing to move to Tokyo. You can work remotely on a few days a week, but we would like to be an uh, I mean, working from the office as much as possible so that we can. Uh, it's it's much more. It makes life a lot easier when it comes to prototyping, uh, as well as building a good company culture early days. Yes. What's the tax stack? So right now we are using uh, on the front end Babylon JS. It's a WebGL library. Uh, if you're into WebGL. And, uh, and React for other UI components. On the back end, it's Java and Kotlin and everything runs on GCP. But this could change right now. Like I said, we are basically building a small prot We What we have right now is a small prototype. We could completely rewrite the code before we release to public in June. Something like that, yeah. Can we get an invite to test? If you're interested, you can sign up. But uh, like I said, uh, we're you, you please sign up, but we'll, we'll consider it. I, I, definitely after June, it, I think we'll have a free version for anyone to test in our website. But before June, uh, we'll, we'll think about it if you, yeah. What is the best way to apply and ask questions? Yeah, just send me an email. Um, uh, I think I put my email here. So it's vijay at unseen.app. Or if you, um, you can also directly just go, go to our website and just, you know, uh, apply to that uh, hello at unseen.app. So I'll just put it in the chat after this. Yeah. Please. Cool. Oh yeah, uh, so the video was not showing. So uh, thank you, your team member is sharing the intro video right now in the chat. Oh, the video was not showing? Nope. 
the J JD was also not showing? Uh, video was not only showing, um, but you were explaining it very explicitly. Okay. Oh my God. So if, yeah, I was not aware of that. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Worries. Um, okay, guys, any other questions you have to EJ? Uh, by the way, how many people are you looking for? Just one full time engineer at the moment. Yeah. And their working language is uh, English? English. Yeah. We prefer if you can speak Japanese, uh, but it's not required. Uh, but you definitely need to at least uh, be able to read and write English at least. To work, yeah. Cool. So I think uh, we have no questions so far. Um, and yeah, if people have questions, they will be always uh, happy to maybe send it to you afterwards via LinkedIn or a email. Yep, perfect. Thank, Thank you so you. much, Vijay. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Great. And with that, we are ready to wrap up our session. Finally, thank you so much, speakers, for your amazing presentations. We had a bunch of cool startups today in a different, from a different industries, from a different stages. This is really amazing. It was very motivating and inspiring for all of us here. And thank you for all of those who stayed with us until that late time. Um, and I'm very happy to um, say that we will definitely uh, continue this tradition of having pitch nights and probably organizing another one event like this in a couple of months. Cool. Um, Thank you so much again, everyone, for joining us. I will share this recorded video with speakers and also with our audience on Meetup afterwards. Um, please feel free to follow Livagon social media accounts for more events. Stay in touch with us and also good luck for all the startups. Uh, feel free to let me know if you need something from us as well, because you know Livagon is a coding bootcamp. We have a lot of talented alumni web developers, product managers, UX designers who might be really interested to work for free in order to polish their skills or not for free as well would be amazing. So feel free to send me a message if you guys uh, need some help. Cool. And with that, I'm wrapping up the event. Thank you so much and have a good night for those based in Japan, for those based elsewhere. Have a good day or morning or something else. Bye-bye. See you.